Hey everyone, welcome back. So this is part three of Miranda's story. And in this video, she goes through what she eats in a day. So on a normal day, not like, you know, like I said, now I'm eating these guys, right? So this is what I'm eating um, after my celery juice and um, watermelon. So for me personally, I have suffered from chronic dehydration. I always have melon. I don't care if I'm cleansing, whatever I'm doing, I'm having some sort of blended melon or a bowl full of melon because that's really helped improve my hydration. Um, but on a normal day, and I still do follow a lot of the advanced cleanse um, patterns, but for example, right now it's lemon water, celery juice, blended watermelon, and then I go right into these guys with butterleaf lettuce. Um, and then, you know, I'll, I can add in different things like you did, like Brussels sprouts or asparagus. But that's just that this right now healing something that came up in my gut. But normally every day I we do I make the lemon water for the family I make the celery juice for the family. <clears throat> I do blended melon. Sometimes my daughter does it well as well with me. My son usually likes to eat it because he likes to chew because he gets over like I just want to, you know, I don't want to keep drinking out of a straw, mom. And then we do the heavy metal detox smoothie as a family. Um and then there's like, what I love is this community is full of great recipes, right? Like we've been using three different family recipes, you know, from three different places, like this past prior to the squash thing, you know, a couple of weeks. So like, you know, some potato cassava tortillas with some steamed potatoes and peas and cumin and different spices in for dinner. So, you know, I, I just play around with a couple of different recipe books that have been put out into the community with all the recipes and the cleanse to heal and all the, the new books, the kids do like it. So we always eat medical medium dinners. Um, usually for the kids, like I said, after the heavy metal detox smoothie, uh, it could be a, another smoothie. It could be, I don't know. Um, my daughter does eat a lot of steamed potatoes with me because she started having acne. And so she wanted to bring her fats down lower. So she's having great success lowering her fats and eating potatoes with mom in the afternoon. Um, so, I mean, we, we kind of eat kind of plain, but I just let the kids like pick. We do a lot, like for the kids, they like the cassava pasta at night. We make homemade marinara's. Um, you know, we don't eat a lot of grains per se, cause my, my littlest has still some eczema we're working on and he has a lot of strep. So he has a very high strep load. So we try to keep away from those, but you know, in a pinch, like, like cassava pasta, you know, I have more time now that I'm able to cook, which I love, love, love. I always pick like, you know, something on here. We love Estonian stew. We love the uh, sweet potato tortilla soup. So it's winter and I want like the soup in the spices. Um, mm -hmm. I will say that going fat free was critical in healing for me. And I love spicy food. So I grew habanero peppers and they, and the habanero peppers kept me fat free for a long time. <laughs> Cause I just put all, all I need is like spite, right? Like, yeah, I love them. So, you know, for me going fat free, um, was, was crucial in, in climbing out of the hole. Uh, and now, now, and then I eat avocado and different things, but you know, I eat the way I eat now, not because a book tells me to. Um, I mean, that's how I got started, but because that's how I feel best, right? I don't particularly feel good on like cashews or, you know, nuts or seeds. I don't really feel well on it. Like my digestion goes off, you know, some of my heart fluctuations come back. I know the fats don't do me well. Um, so I just eat how I feel best. Cause I don't, you know, I have a, a lot of things I want to do with my kids and make up time for the last two years. You know, I was kind of out of it. So I don't, I don't mess around really, <laughs> mm -hmm. but there are a lot of foods for kids, you know, nowadays it's way easier. Yeah. And if they want to, there's so many good. Like, yeah. I mean, we had a uh, fat free pasta last night, right? Yeah, we did. It was uh, made out of peas, just peas, peas with the only ingredient. And well, then the sauce we made was made out of like butternut squash, right? Yeah. Yeah, so butternut squash with some spices blended um, makes the sauce. And then we just boiled some pasta that was made out of peas. Yeah, so fat free, you know, and then we always have like, we'll have the, the pea soup. Yeah, so nice. split and pea soup. That's a good fat free option to make. And then the medical medium asparagus soup, um, the fat free version without the almonds is also a really good um, fat-free recipe to make Yeah, too. so there's like all these fat-free recipes out there 
especially in some of medical mediums new books because he really wants people to reduce the fats because the fats are all connected to your liver so it's like if you're not having a good night's sleep and you're wondering why you're waking up every night at two three o'clock well it's your liver so if you reduce the fats before you go to bed then you get a better night's sleep it's so true so true yeah and that's what's cool about all his books is there's a recipe in there for everybody everyone and like i said like you know there are ones back in thyroid healing that are heavier that if you're doing the more transition food you know if you want you know because my husband and my kids still eat legumes um and they eat, you know, my, my son does really like the avocado. Um, so, you know, there are recipes for that. And they, so it's not like, it's easy because if you make a big salad and I put steamed potatoes on mine and some habaneros or jalapenos, and then we can make like, like, you know, you got, we love the cashew cream sauce from you guys. Right. So they like to put that on the potatoes in the salad or, or like a tahini dressing or something. So, but yeah, I mean, there's so many ways to change it. And the, like the spiciness is kind of key. Like you can make one meal and then they can put salt in it and different spices. And mom puts like all her like super hot, you know, <laughs> like the, the bonnet scotch, like, I mean, all the oh, hot, yeah. hot stuff I love. Um, so we can do that. So, you know, you, there's a million ways to make potatoes. Like I steam potatoes in the morning um, in, a, in a big, in like the Cousinart steamer. And the kids, I can make fries out of it. I can make tortillas out of it. I can make, you know, just mashed potatoes. I can chop them up and just roast them for the kids and put some seasoning on them. So there's a variety of different ways, you know, to do potatoes. We, we live off of potatoes. Oh, yeah. So, you know, we've got uh, our, our storage prep is full of potato flakes. <laughs> so nice. That is our go-to food. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, potatoes are great. We eat a lot of potatoes we eat a ton of potatoes <laughs> a ton potatoes and squash now after doing that squash cleanse it's like and squash is in season we're you know all about the squash as well the winter squash winter yeah. squash mm -hmm. yeah yeah and like potatoes and squash they help especially when you're first starting out on medical media because you have that problem because you're switching from like this this high fat high protein diet heavy heavy food to eating all this light food that moves in and out of the your your system so quick that you just never feel full so or you get hungry a lot sooner yeah yeah so like with with us when we were first starting we uh we had that problem and then we found that we could eat potatoes and we could eat squash and that stuff would satisfy our right tummies <laughs> and then we could you know we could go a longer period of time um feeling full like seasonings right like yeah. we used to eat, we used to eat meat and when we'd cook meat we would always season the meat we never just like eat the meat as but is it's all about the flavor yeah so like when you're what you're eating with yeah exactly whatever you're eating if you can spice it right then you can make it taste like anything that you used to eat yeah and once you give it up we don't look back and wish we could still eat those things not at all i don't have any cravings for meat i mean I, I definitely went through cravings in the first two years absolutely and even when i started doing the cleanse to heal the, like the a lot of the advanced 369 recipes the cravings pop back up but but we know why right we're releasing those fat cells and those toxins that were during that phase when you were eating those foods so it's like and the viruses are like yes you should have that like we want you to eat high fat because then you know i don't get bombarded by oxygen you know, <laughs> and die so you should definitely you know thicken that blood up yeah. so you know nowadays that the 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 cravings are just i mean they're just for random things like you know i'm like oh i love orange juice right and like now like in the winter when it gets cold i'm like I want big glasses of fresh squeezed Florida ripened oranges. Like those are my cravings. That's very different. Um, yeah. So, and, and I also wanted to do tell you that from your watching your squash videos, this guy has become one of my favorite squash ever. And I have done the potato mono cleanse because I had some food poisoning. 
I did the banana, banana uh, mono cleanse to help, you know, do the sleep, keeping the potatoes in. This has been my best friend for like a week now. And I, I highly recommend watching, you know, if people are listening and watching your videos on the squash mono cleanse, because I'm loving it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm the, loving it. The, the delicata, that was one of our favorite ones, right? Yeah, I think we discovered that like, or it was introduced to us like maybe three years ago and we baked it and just were like, whoa, we've like, been missing out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Zona at the farmer's market told us about it and told us you should try it. But, you know, everybody is used to just eating kind of those those popular ones like the butternut right. squash and the spaghetti squash. And no one really thinks of these other squashes because they don't carry them in the grocery stores. Yeah. But yeah, delicata was like one of our favorites. And then uh, this year we liked the kabocha. kabocha. That was like one of our, our new favorites this year. And we had had it a couple years, like, years ago. Yeah, yeah, we tried the kabocha medical medium squash soup. Didn't ca really care for it then. Um, but now, you know, taste buds have adjusted and we love it. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely uh, the favorite of the year. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, you guys gave me some great inspiration on that. And then just, you know, just I know with you, Ben, too, like you've had digestive issues, you know, that you've healed. Mm -hmm. And um, so for me, I was going through, I got hit with some other whatever was going on out there in the world and uh, having some digestive issues pop back up. And I said, I know I'm going to give that whole squash thing a try. And it's been like within a day, it was stomach was settled bloating was gone no pain on no nothing um and so i'm so addicted to it i don't want to stop because i feel so good on it it's like the perfect blend between the the sweetness of a banana and the starchiness of a potato you know because like oh, when i ate the bananas i missed like the grounding of the potato and when i ate the potato i missed the sweetness of the banana but these guys are just the perfect amount of sweet and starch to kind of like have no cravings, you know? Maybe if I went as long as you did, I'd be like, all right, I gotta, I gotta have something else. Well, yeah, I was having trouble on the liver cleanse because I- We just did it. Yeah, I was just on the mono cleanse like a week before we started the liver cleanse and the mono cleanse was all like winter squash and asparagus and Brussels sprouts for 28 days straight and then we took like that week off because it I think it was Thanksgiving I wanted to and then your birthday yep and then so and then the liver cleanse came along and boom we were right back on it and then it, I you remember got more like, of a variety though yeah I got to eat more stuff but it was like when that day came up where it was like asparagus oh, and Brussels yeah. sprouts it was like I was dreading <laughs> All right, more asparagus, more Brussels sprouts, but you know, it, it's all good. It, it, I cleansed and that was the point of the cleanse. Yeah. So. It's a lot of chewing on the original. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah. Um, the other thing was, is I just, I wanted people to see how easy this mono cleanse was, you know, like the mono cleanse with like bananas you can get sick of bananas after so long, but with the winter squash cleanse, you get all these different types of winter squash. So you don't really get bored. So I think that's why I was able to do it for so long without feeling like, when is this going to end? You know, unless you live in an area that has a bunch of different bananas. Uh, yes. If you lived in the <laughs> tropics or something, then totally the banana cleanse because you'd probably be getting some papayas too. And that's the- Oh one of the yeah, 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 right, the here. double, yeah. yeah. So Miranda, I love watching your stories on Instagram because you always have good little tidbits that you pull out of Anthony's books. And I know you haven't been on it lately because you- um, Have no phone. Have no, have no phone. <laughs> um, but where can people find you on Instagram when you're back up and running on your stories? Yes. Yeah, so um, Miranda at Compassionate Healers. So that's my, uh, I, going through school, I did finally end up getting a master's in nutrition. So I did start as a nutritionist. So that's what I do nowadays. Um, so that's the, that's the header for my, for my, you know, my business name. Miranda compassionate underscore compassionate healers. And I will be back on, like I said, I am getting a new phone starting January 
if all like fingers crossed so i'll be back on it was an unintentional break and i've missed you know being out there with people because I, I just love the community so much just you know it's inspiring you know for me every day to do that so yeah um i hope to be back out there but yeah people can find me there and then um one day i'll have a website but it's it's still there well, that's <laughs> it's still working a work in progress yeah yeah, yeah. Well, it's good that you're putting yourself out there because I know there's a lot of people that are chronically ill and going from doctor to doctor, from trend to trend, like we did, and they're getting nowhere. They're getting no answers. They're getting no help. So it's good that you're putting yourself out there and you're willing to help these people because you have such a, a, a powerful story. And I think that uh, your story goes a long way and I think people can relate to it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it's neat because I have got one foot in the, um, because the school that I went to obviously was not a medical medium school. I so wish it was, right? So I have to unlearn things. It's neat because I, I get the, the pleasure of introducing people to medical medium information who've never heard of it before. Yeah. They're just like, I'm just coming to a nutritionist because I've got high blood pressure. And I'm like, oh, wait until you see this. <laughs> like, you are in the right spot, right? So it's interesting because I do, people ask me, how do you, how do you get people introduced to medical medium information? And I, I tell them, I actually start with the liver rest, um, the uh, uh, thyroid healing and some of the liver rescue recipes. And I just start, here, here are some, you know, we're going to take these foods out for a while, see how you feel. Here are some recipes, try these. And they're like, these are really good. And I'm feeling really good. So I usually start with the food and, and then they start to, and they get a couple of successes under their belt. Right. And then I start to introduce like more and more information. So it's different because, you know, working in a community that's a lot, a lot of people are outside of, had never heard of Anthony. I'm like, well, I'm so grateful and thankful that uh, someone told me. Right. And so I get to kind of introduce people who haven't heard of the information. So that's, that's the exciting part. Totally. Mm -hmm. Totally. Well, do you think that there's anything that we missed or is there anything else that you want to tell everybody? I could go on all day. So <laughs> I'm sure it's so hard to say. I mean, I will say that, you know, when, if you are a type A personality and when you're starting to get some recovery under your belt, don't, don't jump back in and sign up for everything again, because that was one thing that I had to like go back and forth with of like, I'm going to commit to all these things again. And it really, you know, the second time you know, I feel like it's like my second or third chance at life again. Right. It's just like, take the time to enjoy the peace of life. Like, I feel like in the world today, everyone's we're all so anxious and what, what's going to happen, what's the world going to be like, but just make sure you take the time every day to find that joy. Um, and every day, because it's still there, the beauty is still around us and it's still there for us and never left. Right. Um, you know, wherever your focus is, your energy goes. So just making sure you, you stay in that positive light. And I, so one, at one point in my darkest, dark, dark moment of healing, somebody said to me, don't give up before the miracle. And that became my motto. So every hard day or every hard hour or every hard minute, I would tell myself, don't give up before the miracle. It's coming. It's coming. Don't give up before that happens, Miranda. You, you got this, you know? So I would just like to impart that on people who are struggling. You know, don't give up before the miracle. It is happening and it will happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's a really great message for everyone out there, especially the chronically ill. Um, you know, everyone has different symptoms, a different story, and it's really great to hear your story, even though you had to suffer. Um, but, you know, it's brought you this far and it's, it's important for others to understand that everyone's healing timeline is so much different. Like Ben's story is one story. Your story, you suffered from baby you know, throughout your entire life. And then you even had a flare right in the middle of doing medical medium protocols. I mean, many people would just give up because they felt would feel like it's not helping them. You know, we get messages all the time. Someone might be six months into protocols and um, having all these extra symptoms and it freaks them out and they don't know, you know, they're lo they lose faith in mm -hmm the whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just, it's good to hear other stories and to see that other people, you know, 
are going through things that are similar or just to see that things can be different for everybody. Mm-hmm. And that's why that's why I try to like impart on people too is that you know we all want like this the speedy the the speediness of healing. And I look at my I'm like, you know, with, <laughs> recently Anthony says it can take up to 10 years to clean out your gut and the intestines from putrefied proteins and fat to actually have your poop float again, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm like 10 years. Wow. Like there's a lot of healing to be to, ha- to be had, right? In those 10 years. And I'm like, and I know that's me because, you know, I, I've suffered for 40, you know, some years. And I, so my mindset should be of, it shouldn't, I shouldn't expect healing to occur like 100% remission of everything in a year or even two years. Like I'm, you know, I know that, that I'm committed to this. And as we go on through life's journey, right. um, that things will start to, improve and that's one thing like not only have I regained sleep and energy and I'm able to like function and cook dinner and all that stuff again that seems you know so minuscule that I'm so grateful for for doing every day uh, you know these issues have healed permanently right so they're not it's not I'm not taking a medication to get it over it I'm not drinking coffee which I was doing that first year uh, on medical medium you know I wasn't using caffeine as a crutch right I'm not having to do that anymore I'm not having to like you know to use these crutches or band-aids anymore. I know these symptoms are healed and yes, I may feel them up, come up again during cleanses because we're still moving those same toxins out. Um, but, you know, other than that, like, you know, it's been knock on wood, it's been great. Right. So, you know, I think that these changes that we make are permanent and lifelong, um, you know, that, that this healing really works. It's not just a temporary fix. Like a lot of the stuff I'd done prior was 